Well, howdy, guys. Sorry I didn't get anything out pretty much in the last week. I've been quite busy with work, amongst other things. Lots of stuff going on um, in my own personal life. But today I wanted to talk about uh, Joe Biden's trip to Delaware using Air Force One. Now, if you guys aren't too good with geography, you should understand that uh, Delaware is only a few hours from D.C. Not that I expect the president to take a motorcade all the way to Delaware. That would seem a little bit ridiculous. That would provide, from a tactical standpoint, from a security standpoint, lots of opportunities to be hit. So then maybe they should take, he should have taken Marine One, the helicopter. Um, but whatever. They took Air Force One to Delaware. And his seeming reason for this, the, the given reason, I should say, was because he went there to vote. Joe Biden took Air Force One to Delaware so he could go vote. Now, I don't know about you, but I seem to remember that there's this whole big push about mail-in ballots, and mail-in ballots are no different than absentee ballots, right? Of course, none of that's true, but uh, there are absentee ballots and there are absentee voting. I voted for... Uh, uh, well, man, I can't remember what election it was, but I voted absentee at some point. Uh, it was probably midterms uh, while I was in the Marine Corps. And um, I think one of those elections, I was actually home on leave or something like that or nearby where I could vote in Maryland. But regardless, seems a little sus that the president would do all that unless maybe he doesn't trust the absentee system. I don't know. Um, not saying anything here, YouTube, because I know we can't confuse people about elections, apparently, uh, which is an arbitrary standard, by the way. If you guys didn't know, YouTube put out a new arbitrary standard, as if they've never done that before. Uh, in any case, Joe Biden's a Build Back Better guy. Joe Biden's the environmentalist. He necessarily was going to stop fossil the fossil fuel industry. He ran on that. And all you morons didn't listen. All you morons who voted for him. Or you did listen, but you're too stupid to understand the consequences of that. The billions, billions of people that will die and suffer because of it uh, in the next generation or two. That's just a fact. And a lot of it's going to be, uh, you know, in the, the millions, tens of millions, probably hundreds of millions in the next few years as the supply chain shortages, as the fuel shortages, as everything else continues to uh, grow. <coughs> so, <clears throat> seemingly, as all of the actors, the hypocrites, who are climate activists, uh, seemingly, he doesn't really actually care about that issue. What he cares about is the messaging to tell you what to do while he gets to live whatever lifestyle he wants. And again, why wouldn't he do an absentee ballot? That's what makes the most sense. I'm pretty sure that's what most presidents have always done. Unless there was some other reason to go to Delaware. Maybe it has something to do with uh, concerns about the, the state government there looking into him and his family. Meanwhile, of course, we have Mike Lindell, the my pillow guy <laughs> getting pulled over and subpoenaed by the FBI quite strange took his cell phone um, now just from a, a data security perspective if you're high profile and you don't realize that you're being hunted and tracked down for supporting Donald Trump yet and you don't have your information secure and you're carrying it around on your cell phone you're an idiot and uh, hopefully Mike Lindell is not that stupid and all the other 50 some odd people they've arrested, not Gavin McGinnis, apparently that was a hoax, uh, which is fine, uh, you know, there was speculation about that, but it doesn't matter if Gavin was wrapped up in any of this or not, uh, Mike Lindell is the my pillow guy. It's the same kind of reaction, it's the same response. Who is this guy? Oh, he provided funds to Trump. The FBI has openly stated that uh, the January 6th thing was not an insurrection. So this is all congressional, which has no sort of actual policing authority. So this is all uh, political theater, folks. 
all of it. Now, it doesn't mean that there won't be real world consequences. It doesn't mean that the Gestapo that is the FBI will not lock these people up for something. I mean, look at the, the people who were let in, the grannies at January 6th. But it, it should be, you know, noteworthy to, to people who aren't ideologues that things aren't right. Things aren't working right in the Banana Republic of America. In the People's Republic of America, if you would. It's just not going the way it should be. It's not going constitutionally. Of course, that's been a problem since, what, the Civil War. But uh, aside from that... You know, actually, it's been a problem from the beginning, the very beginning. Um, because the Constitution can only be upheld by people who are willing to uphold it. And power doesn't care about those things. Power doesn't care about a piece of paper. Power only cares about power itself. And the most interesting thing is, is that uh, people cede their own power through voting to be slaves. You know, H.L. Micken talked about this, that they uh, people basically vote in their masters every four years. And it's true. Like, there, there would be a difference if you actually voted for candidates who were good leaders, if you knew anything about them, if you knew what they were actually involved in. Let's take uh, someone like Mitt Romney, for instance, who is a big Monsanto shell. Mitt Romney, of course, is uh, part of the reason why things like Roundup and DDT were sprayed on people and given cancer and whatever else. And then he's not supposed to be some big corporatist guy. He's supposed to be a run-of-the-mill Republican and he's, you know, salt of the earth, yada, yada, yada. No, he's establishment, folks. And the left would point to guys like Romney and talk about all these things. And, oh, Republicans, they're all corporatists, da, 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 da. Ignoring completely the fact that their team is the exact same thing. Because, see, people are tribal. People don't think things through. People are emotional. You know, I remember a while back, I had a pollster call me. I talked to her. She, she, she actually subbed to my channel because I've talked to her for so long. And she was talking about how she studied some philosophy in school and she really loves it. She loves the logical thing. And anytime anyone gets emotional, you lose the argument. And I told her, no, that's not true. And I've stated this before. And it's not true. It's true to someone who is cold uh, on facts. That they want the hard facts. They just, they just, they need the cold, hard facts or I should say cold to emotion. I said cold on facts. Cold to emotion who want the facts. It doesn't mean that they're not emotional people. Everything's emotional in the end, folks. The fact that you like facts is an emotional response. Uh, but that's the key. Everything is emotional in the end. If you really want to catch people, you have to catch them in their emotions. And this is why the things like the schools, teaching CRT was a big deal, or teaching kids about... Uh, homosexuality and transgenderism and at inappropriate ages, just as if heterosexual sex was taught at inappropriate ages. It's just inappropriate. You don't do that at that time. In fact, there's a lot of evidence uh, based in all the things that I've read and experienced and known over the years. Uh, I could tell you, and also training I've had, uh, that, yeah, 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 exposing children to sexual things before puberty is actually traumatic. But hey, that's an aside. Let's get back to the uh, emotional appeal. The Democrats have known this for a long time. They've always done this. This is what gets them so mad, uh, let's say, with libs of TikTok or, let's say, Project Veritas, because they expose this emotional appear appeal, which is so heinous, because it only actually appeals to the emotions of heinous people. And those who would not be so heinous that you might be friends with, they ignore these facts because of some greater emotional good, some greater emotional appeal of some utopia fixing all the world's problems. And that they then get to participate in the virtue of that. And so it doesn't matter that Joe Biden flew to Delaware like two and a half, three hours away uh, or could have taken a helicopter, which I believe is more fuel efficient than jets, I, I'm, or at least less environmentally polluting. Um, but no, no, he couldn't do the absentee ballot. It doesn't matter. Uh, you know, I'm a dem. I'm going to side with him because, well, he's Joe Biden. He's saving democracy. 
Uh, sure he is. Sure he is. And I and, and, and Donald Trump is a complete threat to democracy as he was democratically elected. Mm -hmm. Yeah, never, never put in instigated federal lockdowns, vax mandates, any of those things, despite him being an advocate of the jab. Look, guys, none of this, none of this uh, is on board, right? All of this is just uh, messed up nonsense that, again, goes back to this, this tribal thinking. It's not about the future of your children. It's not about the future of the country. For some, for the left, it is. But the future of the country for them is some country that never existed that will always fail because a nowhere place is a nowhere place. Like, you have to reject the argument on its first principles. But that gets back to the logic of it. And most people aren't good at that. So how about the emotional things of it? Well, basically, here's what it comes down to. You are being sold a bill of goods that you will be taken care of by rich elitists who don't care to take care of you now who already have your cities destroyed now, that already have the highest crime rates, murder rates now, that already have the highest poverty levels, that already have the highest levels of oppression for your minorities now. These are the people that you are backing that are the arbiters of truth and justice in the American way. These are the people that you on the left are supporting. Maybe not the extreme left, Although the extreme left actually does vote for these people because they, they, they can't bring themselves to vote for Republicans. Um, but, you know, none of these people have stable emotional personalities either. They're themselves distracted, detached. Um, they're not good at relationships. Their relationships are nothing but misery and harshness and evil. And so they wish to bring that and put that upon you as well. Whether they do it consciously or subconsciously, I don't care. It's what they do. And the appeal for them, actually, they know, or at least again, on a subconscious level, is, is that they want you to be as miserable as them. They don't want people to be prosperous, or if they are, they want themselves and their buddies to be so that they can extract vengeance upon the world. This is all emotional. This is not logical. And look, folks, the best intentions pave the road to hell. That's all I have for today. This is All Minus One. My name is Bill, and I wish you all well.